Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Hey, Krista. You guys ready to rock and roll? Okay. Oh, we are going to just get started today because I am ready and fired up. All right. So um, whew, let's read our manifesto really quickly so we don't forget to do that. So we have plenty of time. So we'll start off the day doing that. I've already read it once. We get to read it again. I was kind of a freak this morning at the gym, like running around screaming loud affirmations as I was running around the gym. They're like, who is that crazy person? <laughs> All right, you guys ready? Let's rock it out. Um, I am a community marketer. Yeah, I'm not a visionary. I'm 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 my name is Rich Barnes and I am a community market leader. and educator. Woohoo! You guys, I'm yeah. slowing down. Usually I'm always like one of the first ones. I'm slowing down, I think, in my speaking. Um, all right. So today what I want to talk to you about is um, how we can ensure that as real estate agents and entrepreneurs and business owners that we stay in business. Before I get into this, I don't want to forget Thursday's call is going to be open to everyone. And the reason being is I have a special guest speaker. She's going to be speaking about the four levels of leadership. She has spoken on massive stages um, throughout the country. People pay her to, to speak. And she is an excellent, excellent speaker. Again, it's going to be open to everyone. We will put the link in the, in the blueprint. It'll be from eight to nine. Um, uh, Casey Jiha is her name. And she's going to be speaking on the four levels of leadership. And I think this is a really important call to come on because in our business, in our life, we are leaders in every aspect, in our, in our partnerships, as parents, we're leaders in the community, and we're leaders within our businesses and within our own organizations. So um, I would love for all of you to, to be there. Um, I'm really excited to have her there. So again, that's this Thursday. Everyone is welcome. All right. So let's go ahead and um, get into how we can ensure that as real estate agents, business owners, and professionals, that we are not like the 13% of agents that will not be in business after the first, I think it's two years or five years. Um, real estate agents don't typically tend to last in the industry very long. And the reason being is because most of them do not treat their business like a business. So what I want you to think about when you're thinking about your business is that there's all different levels of our business. And if you'll notice that that this is kind of like a full circle, right? And many people are usually good at one or two or two or three things, but then they're, they're, they lack in other areas of their business. And when they lack in these other areas of their business, there are gaps. And when there's gaps, that's when we'll see the up and downs, okay? So we want to think about our business as a complete sales cycle. How do we make sure that we have a very comprehensive, well-rounded business and, so that we can ensure not just that we survive, that, but that we thrive in business, okay? So um, what I want to do today is talk about the different levels, the different, you know, levels of, of our business that we should be focusing on and understand that it's really impossible. Remember, we always say balance. Balance is something that's almost impossible to be balanced, right? We would love to be balanced, but in many cases in our life, in when we have certain areas that we need to focus on, sometimes other areas might get you know might sort of become a little bit weaker and that's okay so for example we, we talk about you know there's times when we know that our business needs to be focused on our business because maybe we're having difficulty or we're having some hard times and so that means that maybe we might our health or our fitness or, or maybe our relationship might not get as much attention and it's okay to do that especially when we communicate with people as far as where we're at. But to think that it's, you know, we have to be balanced in every aspect of life. I call that BS in my personal opinion. It's very difficult to be balanced as much as we would love to. Um, and as much as we want to be well-rounded people, it's difficult, but our business is the exact same. All right. It's the exact same, but it's something that over time, when we focus on different areas of our business and we learn 
implement, master, and repeat, right? One of these, one of these six areas that as we start to, to really make it be a part of our, our business, our goals, our objectives, our lifestyle in our business, that it will get easier and easier. And it's not something that in most cases, you're just going to be able to develop overnight. And that's okay. But as if you think about your business, right? Um, when you go to college, for example, you go to college and college takes time, right? If you're going to get your bachelor's degree or your master's degree, or if you're going to become a doctor or an attorney or a lawyer, I mean, you're going to school for a very long time to be able to, to be able to get that degree and to hold that credential. Um, so our business, sometimes we need to think of it in that we're going to, it's going to take place in stages. Okay. And so the first one is marketing, right? Followed by lead generation, lead nurture, conversion, fulfillment and delivery. And then what I call refer, retain and resell. And I actually now call that the five R's and you get that with having strong rituals and routines. Okay. So you'll notice that when you're looking at this, each, each phase, it like one leads into the next. So some of you might be really, really good at marketing, but maybe your lead generation is not the best. And if your lead generation is not the best, that means that the conversion and the uh, lead nurture are going to be difficult as well as fulfillment and delivery, right? You might be really, really great with clients, which is the fulfillment and delivery part of it. But if you're not able to generate leads, then you're not going to be able to fulfill on that. Does that make sense? So I want you to understand that all of these different phases really, really go in line with one another. So what I want you to kind of think about today is we're going to really review each phase of our complete business, right? Our complete business. And then we're going to look at our business in a manner of, okay, what can I do? What areas am I strong in? What areas am I weak in? What areas maybe can I use a little bit of improvement? And what areas am I good at that I can even become better at? All right. And with the thing, with the thing I want you to understand is there's no judgment here. There's no right. There's no wrong. It's just evaluating where we're at because studies and research shows that when we can take a clear evaluation of who, where we're at in our business, in our life, and really, really kind of hone in on what's working, what's not working. And with what's not working, what we can do to improve it, that we are more likely to actually make those improvements, especially if we can identify what areas that we struggle with, right? So um, there's something, I, I know I've talked about this before and I'll talk about it again. There's a, a realistic pessimist, right? And so there's a whole book that was written on realistic pessimism. Um, and basically what that means is, is that, you know, somebody that was, was real, they're realistic about what was gonna happen. And then they were, they understood like, hey, there, I have these issues. And then they weren't pessimistic in a negative way. They were just realistic about what the outcome. And when you're realistic about the outcome and you are able to identify areas of weakness and what, why you're weak in that area and how you're going to be able to overcome it, when you come up to that obstacle, you're much more likely to be able to overcome it. Okay. So let's start with the first phase, which is, and you can make sure you guys can see this for me. Can you see it? No, no, no. Let me change the color. Hello, babe. Try this one. Marketing. I've got a bit of a, um, a glare here. You guys can kind of see. Okay, good. You can see it. Red's working. I'm getting new blinds put in that are blackout so that when I teach, it doesn't glare. So those will be in within the next month. So marketing is the first phase. Now, marketing, when you think about marketing, we don't want to think about our colors, our logo. All of those things are important. Our slogan, you know, marketing is more of attraction right? We want to think of marketing is attraction. Attraction is marketing, right? How, what are we doing to attract business to us? Okay. So I want to hear, uh, you all, you all know these answers. Most of you are doing it right. And you're doing a fabulous job at marketing, but what, what is marketing? So when we're attracting business uh, in such a way that people are raising their hand and saying, I would like to do business with you. What does that look like? So in the chat or just unmute yourselves and let's start, let's start uh, collaborating. So what is marketing? What, do you think of marketing? what is that? Providing educational content. Education. Good, Mike. Giving value. Awesome. Value. Brand recognition. Brand recognition. Good. Being where people can see us. What was that? Was that Isabel, what was that? Being where people can see us, being in front of people. 
Yes, being seen, being seen, exactly, being seen. Right, and serving. Order. What was that? Serving, not selling. Serve, good. Develop trust. Perfect, trust. Asking. Being known. Keep going. Being known. Known, yep. Being seen, being known. Entertain. The five E's, five <laughs> E's, right? Five E's of video. We want to educate. We want to engage. We want to encourage to take action. We want to be enthusiastic. And we want to, what's the other one? Educate. <laughs> educate and entertain, right? Educate and entertain. Put myself on the spot there. Um, so we want to do the five E's. And this we can do, you know, all of this, what we're talking about, all of this is being done through one thing. What is that? Video. 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 Okay. So when you are creating video, you are being seen, you're being known, you are serving, not selling. And there's a little bit of selling in there, right? We're, we're going to always encourage people to take action. We're developing trust. We're attracting. What is marketing, everyone? Marketing is attraction. Everyone say that. Marketing is attraction. Marketing is attraction. Marketing is attraction. We're educating, we're giving value, and we're getting brand recognition, all from utilizing video. Okay, so when you think about video, I don't, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what, you know, I'm, I'm speaking at Funnel Hacking Live, and you all probably do not believe this, but when I, I can talk in front of 10,000 people on video, because I've been doing it for so long, and it's just easy for me, right? It, it didn't used to be, but it is now. But if you put me in front of real live people, it is completely a different story. I mean, you're talking like my heart feels like it's pounding out of my chest. My leg literally like, I mean, it does this, it does this, I'm like holding it down. Okay. So I'm having to visualize every day. I'm getting up earlier in the morning. I'm visualizing myself to get myself comfortable so that I can make an impact. I'm telling myself, in fact, I'll read you what's on my, what's on my thing. It says, I'm a poised, confident, impactful speaker. I have fun on stage. I attract who and what I need while on stage. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yesterday's was the same thing. Yesterday's was I am a confident and poised speaker. I have fun on stage. I control my nerves and I am excited. Okay. The day before, I am a confident and poised speaker. I mean, you can tell this is something I'm working on. So for those of you that are having difficulty with the video, you have to understand that video is doing all of this at one time. And it's not just doing it to one, it's doing it to many. When you properly distribute, it's doing it to many. Now, here's the thing about any type of marketing in our business, all right? And this is what you have to understand, is that when you do the work here, when do you see the results, everybody? Over here. You do the work here, you see the results over here. Do the work here, right? And it just keeps on going. That's how it works. So you might not see the results right away, but if you start hearing things like, people are like, gosh, do I know you from somewhere? I feel like, you know, do we go to school together or something? And you're like, no, it's my videos, right? Or you're in line or somewhere else and people, that means it's starting to work. When all of a sudden somebody calls you from, you know, eight years ago or four years ago and they're like, hey, I'm thinking about buying or something. You haven't spoken to them. I'm telling you, it's because you are attracting business through serving, not selling, educating, adding value, doing all of this. Brand awareness, it's all of this. So for those of you that are still in your head about doing video, you've got to take yourself out of the equation and make the impact that you want to have and the service, you know you're the best person to do the job. There's no one better than you, absolutely, right? You're a community market leader. You're here on this call. You've invested in your business. You're learning 21st century marketing strategies to really, really make the biggest amount of impact for your clients, true? Yes. Okay, absolutely. So we've got to make that more important than our vanity or our fears or our worry, okay? Mm -hmm. No offense, but that's how we look. That's how we sound. So if you want to attract business and stop chasing it, we've got to start video today. When? Today. When? Today. When? Yes. Today. Today. Yes, every single day. And we need to do it consistently. When? Consistently. Consistently. Okay? Don't get too busy and stop doing the things that got you where you're at. 
Yeah. Do not do that. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're having difficulty with video, because I know some of you still are, I need you to go to skin in the game and commit every day to doing a video. Okay. All right. So now that we've attracted our leads and I'm going to leave some of this up, but I'll go ahead and stop it. Now that we've attracted our leads. Okay. What is the next phase is lead nurture. So now we're attracting these leads according to the national association of realtors, buyers and sellers, take anywhere from three to six months. And I will tell you that I am in a high level real estate mastermind group and they did a study and it's closer to a year. It's closer to a year that a buyer or seller starts to think about something before they actually take action. And I can tell you, I'm, I'm that person. I just sold my own personal residence. We thought about it for over a year. Okay. We just kept dabbling in this and that. And when anytime I saw a house come up in my area, I was like, Going to the MLS, checking it out. What's that listed for? Okay. So when we, when we think about lead nurture, I'm going to tell you again, what's the number one best way to lead nurture? Video. Oh, uh, video. 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 Why, why is video the number one best way to lead nurture? It's personalized. They don't forget you. Personalized. It's, it's top of mind. They don't forget you. Top of mind. See your face. You create a one-sided relationship. You build trust. You're a social relationship. You're you visually reconnect. Visually nobody, reconnect. Nobody else is doing it. Nobody else is doing it. You become the authority. You become the yes. Authority. You break down barriers. Position yourself as the authority. Develop trust. You show up and they're like, you've already, you're winning before you arrive. Yes. You're winning before yes. you arrive. Let me tell you guys a story. This is so cool. Okay. For those of you that are not a co-author, you better, you should do it. And here's why. I actually called Alicia Collins. I was like, your book isn't done yet. You, you, you have to get this done. So you guys know I don't go on listing appointments anymore, but on Friday, my brother begged me, please go on. They want you so bad. And I was like, okay, it's been a while. I'll I had to. Go. I had to. It was, we had two big boys. We had to nail them. So we had two big boys, which turned into three. Okay, turned into three. So we, we go to the first, and they're all $1.2 million properties. Now understand, our average price point, we just ran the numbers, is $750,000 in Brentwood, okay? We are attracting a higher price listing because of all the marketing that we do and the exposure and how we position ourselves, how we market and attract ourselves to our community. So Josh calls, he's like, we got two big ones, will you come? And I was like, I'll go to the first one, right? So we go to the first one, and they're like, we, we do the whole nine yards and they're like, oh, we already got your book. And I was like, oh, okay, great. Perfect. So then I was like, he's like, go to the next one, please. I go, fine, I'll go to the next one. So we go to the next one and there's another, they're like, hey, my friend is here. She wants to sell. She lives in Sterling Preserve. And I was like, okay, great. So we had two listings appointment in front of one, all three, really true, $1.2 million. Okay. All three of them said to me, oh, wait, we already got your book. Now, remind you, remember, you do work here. When do you see the results? Here. You do work here. When do you see the results? Josh, when did we deliver those books? Wasn't it in, wasn't it in um, November? Yeah, it's been probably, geez, December, January. Yeah, six months at least. Six months ago? Six months at least. So six months ago, we delivered those books, and we had three listing appointments all at $1.2 million. Now, understand the average price point is $750. Just the difference between the 750 and the 1.2 is 500,000. That's an extra two homes if you think about that as far as does it make sense? So really that is five homes if you're doing 750 from work that we did 6 months ago. Okay? We they see the videos, they read the book, add value, value value value, serve don't sell. Okay? That investment ended up costing, I think we spent, was 13000 for all the books and the delivery. Half of a house pays for that. We've, and we've gotten many more from that, many, many more. But my point is, is that this is all an attraction-based marketing tactic. When I hand-delivered those books, we're nurturing, right? When they see my video content and they read the book and all these things, it's lead nurture. They're calling me from six months ago, calling us. Okay. That's a six month process. Six months ago, three listing appointments in one day. And we've gotten many more from the book. But my point is, is that lead nurturing is something that we cannot stop doing. Lead nurture is not just send out a flyer, 
make it's it is send out a flyer it's make a phone call in fact one of the things i want to talk about today if we have enough time if not we'll do it next tuesday is the fact that i want you guys to start thinking about lead generation okay lead and we actually skipped lead generation that was the next one so we'll go back to it but lead generation not just with facebook ads right facebook is getting much more complicated it's right now with the ios 4 update ads accounts are getting shut down like crazy i mean it's it's just harder it's not as easy as it was six seven years ago to lead generate so we want to make sure that we are still building our list right we're still we because we own our list right when we create ads and when we start to lead nurture and we start to do lead magnets and we start to build our list we're taking people off of a platform and putting them onto ours right? We're taking them off of Facebook, off of a platform, we're putting them onto ours. And now we own that list. Why is that important? Because if all of a sudden Facebook goes away or Google goes away or any of these platforms goes away, we still own that list and we can still then market to that list mm -hmm. okay, in different ways. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. <laughs> gosh, you're so funny. I'm muting you. Okay. Goose, okay. mute yourself. Oh, you did. Good, good. Somebody's not muted and somebody keeps lighting up. I thought it was my brother. Um, all right. So marketing number one, right? Lead generation. What is lead generation? Now let's talk about lead generation. Now, obviously we know that when you're creating video content, you're generating that's lead generation. Okay. Just because you cannot say, I got this listing from this, you know, CMA drop off ad or this seller seminar, this buyer seminar, I'm telling you, you are generating more leads than you know, because your content is doing more selling for you than anything else is while you're sleeping, while you're on vacation, while you're cuddling with your husband, okay, and wife, partner, whatever it might be. It's your content is generating leads for you. It's nurturing your leads for you. It's marketing, it's attracting, it's doing all of those things all in one. Okay, I hope I'm getting you guys like to really get your, you know, to like to hone in on this right now. OK, so I want to think about other means of lead generation that are that are old school and not old school. I want to hear all of it. So start start yelling it out. And I'm going to start writing it down. Lead generation. Location. Direct mail. Farming. Yep. Location nomination. OK, good. Farming. Door knocking. <laughs> Open house. Open house. Life events. Good. Life events. Cold calling. Okay, I'm not going to say cold calling because here's the deal. If you are creating video content and nurturing your leads, you are not cold calling because people know who you are. Let me just repeat that. If you are consistently producing content correctly, you're making a connection, so you're going to convert. It's not a cold call. Every single person in the county knows me. <laughs> okay. And guess why? Because I'm consistent about producing my video content. So when I call people, People, they're like, is this, is this really Krista? Hey, yes, yeah, great. They want to talk to me. It's the same with those of you who are consistently producing content and correctly distributing it. It's not a cold call. It's a, you're, are you that realtor? How many of you has that happened to you? You're like, you're at the doctor's office or you're somewhere and they're like, raise the hands, the consistent ones. They're like, are you that, are you that person? Yes, it's awesome. It's not cold calling. What else? Go ahead. Uh, parties. Going, um, what's the word community? Uh, fear of influence. Volunteer. Good. Volunteering. Sphere of influence. Listing signs. Signage. Good. Okay. Now what I want you to do is I want you to think about all of these things that we've talked about. For example, open houses. Okay. How do we now do an open house and all of you know the answer to this and put a 21st century digital marketing twist on the open house. Everything that you do from now, I want you to think digital. How can I take this thing that I've been doing this old school way and how can I put a digital twist on it? What's a digital twist look like? Digital. Facebook live. Open, open, live open house. Facebook Video. live. Survey. Sure. Advertise it ahead with a video. Advertise that report. Digital sign in. Digital sign in. Do a bomb bomb afterwards to thank them for coming. Yep. Oh, great. Bomb bomb afterwards to thank them for coming. 
a Facebook, a regular Facebook post, a Facebook live, run an ad behind it, do an ad and be like, welcome, you know, video views ad and search, seek out people that are liking to watch videos, pick the interests, write the interests. Okay. Also, if you are doing a certain community or neighborhood, go to real property, uh, property radar, buy the list. It's very affordable. Upload that list into Facebook. Okay. Facebook will then target those people and find more people that are like them to, to go to that open house, get your neighbors to see what you're doing. Okay. Now these are things that really are not difficult. It's just actually taking the time and putting it in a part of your business. Remember, you're always on a job interview. All the little things matter. Lig big little things add up to big things. Okay. How do we put a digital twist on everything that we're doing? So open house, we just put a digital twist. Anything else? Anything else for digital? Okay. Let's take one more. Mm. Okay. Spirit of influence. Spirit of influence. Actually, I'm going to change it because we, we did, I did a training on this and those of you who have been around for a while will know the answer to this. Okay. And I know there's not very many of these right now, but in, fill in the blank and insert something different. If you're going after expireds or for sale by owners, because right now more for sale by owners are going up because for sale by owners, they think that houses are flying off the shelf. So it's so, so easy. So how do we put a digital twist on for sale by owner? Are you looking to transform your business? Well, if the answer is yes, then you don't want to miss out on our intensive event starting soon for only $97. This event is jam packed full days of live coaching with me. We have breakout sessions to customize and implement our daily trainings so that you can actually utilize them into your business. We're going to give you the training to craft your personal strategy to convert your leads into long-term clients. So let's go. What are you waiting for? Register now. Can't wait to see you there. And let's transform your business. Cassie, you know the answer. Sending them a video ahead of time, like bomb bomb text message video, just a quick one, introducing yourself, get the appointment, send them the pre-listing ahead of time, drop off your marketing plan, do your CMA, all the things that we are taught. Exactly. And also, what about why your house didn't sell.com? Can Cassie sell it? Yeah, buying what domains in your area or buying domains with your name so that when people search it, you come up. And when you send them there, what do they see? Why, why your house didn't sell? You drop off a postcard. We had a whole training on this about a year ago. I should do it again, a whole postcard. Find out why your home didn't sell. Find out why for sale voter is not the best option. Go to cancassiesell.com, right? Go to why my home didn't sell.com. Go to is for sale voter a good idea.com. All right, they go there. It's like eight videos on why, you know, stats on for sale by owner versus selling on your own. Things they need to think about when, when selling. Make sure you disclose X, Y, and Z. Like get, get them a thinking, get them afraid, right? What do we need to do too? We need to show, whoa, whoa, whoa. Send them this, right? You, you guys all have access to this. We need to make sure that it's in the um, training. I'll pull this up. You know, think about this. If you were to do a... A, uh, a video, think about all these things. Here's all the things you need to think about when showing your house. Marketing, have you thought about boom, 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 boom. Disclosures, blah, 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 blah. Negotiations, right? You could literally do a video on each one of these bullet points and have it in on there. So when they go there, the force owner says, man, I didn't think about this. I didn't realize all these things that I need to be thinking about, okay? Plant the seed of doubt in their mind. Send them to that page. Now, here's what everyone else is doing. Here's what everyone else is doing to the for sale owner. Everyone else is calling the for sale owner and saying, oh my gosh, I have a buyer in your area. And the for sale owner is thinking, well, why didn't you have the buyer when I actually have my house on the market? Because we just know that's a sales tactic and so do they, okay? But if you're the person that just says, just drops off that, pars that postcard, right? Sends a copy of your marketing plan, draws them to a website where it's no strings attached. There's no confrontation. There's no cheesy salesy. It's information value-based. You're developing a relationship, breaking down their barriers, uh, positioning yourself as the authority figure. All right. 
And then later on, you follow it up with, hey, just checking to see if, if you had a chance to go look at that, go to that website. Do you have any questions? Oh, and by the way, you know, I want to drop off X for you to help you in your future. Make sense? That is putting a digital twist to going after for sale by owners. When your competitors are not doing that, your competitors are calling like crazy and then they give up after a month, right? Because nothing's happened. And then you want to be calling everyone or doing that strategy from anyone that was 90 days ago, 100 days ago, a year ago. Can I mention something, Krista, that people yeah. have to think about too? So when we are creating these no like trust factors, we have to be getting reviews, guys. Like reviews are getting me so much business right now. So I had a listing, past client listed it. Well, it was a hot listing. We had 104 showings. I kid you not, the neighbor calls me and she says, okay, last weekend, you obviously sold my neighbor's house. I was like, yes, you know, we had 30 offers, blah, blah, blah. She was like, then I looked you up online and I read your reviews. Can you come on Monday and list my house and sell it? Wow. And we did. So you got to think about the, all the things, not just the one you have to think about, like if they're looking you and you're, and you are becoming that buzz factor, where's your credibility? What makes you credible? What makes you stand out from other people? Me, you go to my area and you can go, all y'all can do is set Burleson, realtor, and I'm one, two or three, anytime you search always. And it's because of my reviews, because I'm constantly getting reviews. Like I do giveaways. We just gave away an iPad for getting reviews. We got like 30 reviews for an iPad. I got a listing from that batch. Like, I mean, there's the reviews are so important, especially when you are becoming that authority. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cassie, when are you asking people for the reviews? All the time. When I meet them, I tell them to, when I meet somebody initially, I say, go look at my reviews. And I say, I can't wait till we finish our transaction. You can give me a five-star review and you can write something great about our team. Then during the transaction, we have a little workflow that reminds them at closing, I'm asking them as I'm giving them their closing gift. Here's your basket. Don't forget, we send a link. It goes to right now we're only focusing on Google. Really? That's really here on Facebook. Go ahead and give us one on Facebook, too. But we're not doing reviews anywhere else right now. Those are the only two places. And Google is really all I care about. Yeah. Absolutely. And I literally just like, yeah. closed, I just closed on a house. I made a $10,000 commission from a lady that called me and said, I looked, up your area. I looked up agents and you were the only one that had five star, no negative. Can you come list my house? Like, I'm not kidding y'all. It does work. It absolutely it works. I'm, I'm to me. I'm, I, okay. I got you. Delete. Cassie, there we go. All right, all the little things matter. You're always on a job interview. You don't know what that one little thing is going to be that puts somebody over the edge, right? Is the $10,000 commission worth it? Yes. Yes, and can I say something else? Like this yes. is a year of my team not stopping, continuing, consistent. I did not see results right away, guys. I didn't get 50 leads every time I ran an ad, but I kept doing everything. I pushed location domination. I'm a single person. I do have a team, but I'm the only one that's licensed. Now Tim got back on, so that'll be good. But I closed of the 17, we closed our first quarter. 15 of those were in my city, in my city, in my town. Like, I don't want to leave Burleson. And when I started location domination, I was like, ooh, why limit myself? Why limit myself? I'm not limiting myself. I'm just the authority here. Everything else co goes around from there. So it works, but I'm telling you, like 12 months, not changing my marketing budget, not stopping sending the postcards, not stopping, just keep on going. And then this quarter, this year, I mean, everything just boom hit us. And like, we just looked at the numbers. I'll tell you, our market center, we have 580 agents. I'm number four for production and income. The other three people ahead of me are 20 people teams. And it's me and five people. And last year it was me and one person. Woo! But it works. It works. You just have to put in the work and you can't stop. You can't say, oh, I'm not getting anything right now. I'm not. I'm going to stop doing my budget there. You can't. You have to do everything. And another thing on videos, quit thinking about videos as green screen produced ads. Do a video on your Facebook page like, hey, if you're a buyer, you want to know what a seller is looking for and offer. These are the five things that my sellers are looking for. Like give information. Stop worrying about ads and green screens and it being perfect. Just do it. Uh, Cassie, I love you. <laughs> Good job. We need a little bit of inspiration sometimes, everybody. Here's the deal. Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, you don't just all of a sudden climb up Mount Everest in, 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 in a week. Things take time. 
And real estate is one of the most lucrative careers that you will ever be able to have if you will do it correctly. Let me say one more thing, Krista, and I'll get off. Oh, also, if you don't know this about me, so I told you about my production. I also have this little side hustle I joke about. I manage just under 300 rental properties at the same time as doing all this business, doing everything. I still get to the office at 730 and leave at three or four every day. And I'm not working on weekends because I've learned how to control my business, my life, my schedule through this program, like this program set. And I'm 20 years in the business next month. You guys got this. I love it. Thank you, Cassie. I I've only been part of your program, Krista, for like three weeks. And I literally just got a message right now from my 10 video chats that I do or texts that I do every day. And she's like, hey, uh, you're a real estate agent. Can we talk about buying a home? I'm looking. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's all working. It's just consistency, right? It's consistency and giving it the time it takes for it to keep happening, right? Good. I love it. I love this positivity. Remember, what gets celebrated gets replicated. So we celebrate our successes. Success breeds success. That's the reason why we have today's wins on our sheet, <laughs> right? Okay, good job. All right, so Nikki. Yes, I was actually going to just bring my hand down and just ask in, in um, office hours, but what is your best advice for a bad review? So I had one of them gals that you can never please. And I don't have a lot of reviews. So the one bad review has like sunk me under. And I don't want to ask anybody to give me a review because I don't want them to see that. Because it was. She's respond. Next, really. You yeah. need to respond. Respond to that. Respond to that review. And just give give a response that is is kind. But you know, like uh, we, we have had them, I've got one and we responded in a way that somebody could see our response and, uh, it worked out. Okay. Yeah. Let I me need... try to see if I can find ours. Um, so we, we always re respond to every review that we have both good or bad. We respond to it and we've, we've gotten, we had a bad one about five or six years ago and uh, uh, they, it was a re the worst review you could ever imagine. I about died. And so I just waited, you know, a, a week before I responded. And I responded with the most eloquent response. And I wasn't defensive. I was very factual. And people will say to us, man, we love your review. We actually like the fact that you have, you've got like two bad ones and we love how you responded. And they're like, you can't please everyone. There's always the a-holes out there, right? So anytime you get a good review, always respond. Anytime you get... A negative review always is respond. I've gotten negative reviews about my team too. A couple of times I'm like, you know, I, I just respond as a very, very res respectfully. It will happen. It's going to happen. You Don't ask also, for reviews. You can for the also meeting. use it as an excuse to your clients that haven't left your review. Say, look, I had a real a hole, whatever you want to say, review, and I need to get my stars back up. So this is when I need you guys more than ever. And this is when you should be pumping your reviews, not being scared to send people there. You need that thing to be pushed, pushed, pushed as far as it can. Right. And I thought about doing that. It was bad. I mean, I, I would challenge Krista to see which one was worse. And it's one that it was going, I should have let her go, but I didn't. And like, I paid for a thousand dollars of repairs to make sure she got what she wanted. And she was trying to blackmail me to get more and I wouldn't do it. And so she left a horrible review and even sent Nikki, me a text saying, I'm going to cut you off. I'm going to. The answer is, is like you now go and ask past clients, past coworkers, people that you're doing business with that are in title, escrow, all of it. Talk to them about it and, and have them help you. That's your answer. It will move that up. Okay. We've had, we've had people from the Why Reviews Matter um, uh, training. We've had people get as many as like 30 reviews in a two-week time frame. So, uh, and I personally have done that too. We're, we're, from doing the competition and, and giving away the iPad and that kind of thing, you can do it. You just got to, just got to. You just got to do it. Okay. We'll it'll, do it. It'll, it'll help. It'll happen. Let's do it. Let's do it. We'll do it. Okay. So we, awesome. So we've got marketing, lead generation, lead nurture. Okay. Are the, are the first three phases. Remember lead nurture takes time, right? Lead nurturing takes time. Everything that we've talked about so far is lead nurture. Now let's talk about conversion. How do we convert? We've taken the time to market. We've taken the time to generate leads. We've nurtured those leads. Now, how do we convert those leads? Conversion, conversion, conversion. 
First of all, I will tell you, if you are doing the CMA drop-off strategy, every time you do one of those activities, drop off the book, drop off the marketing plan, do the bump, do the, the loom video explaining the CMA, right? Send a digital copy of the book, send a digital copy of the marketing plan. All of those things are conversion, 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 conversion. You're winning before you arrive each time you do one thing. Okay. As many of the tools that we have in our toolbox, you've got the tools in your toolbox. They're in the program. You just have to make those tools your own. And then you have to actually use those tools, right? We've got to make sure that when we do our marketing plan or we do our book or we do our seller guide or our buyer guide or our listing presentation video that we then use that at the appropriate time because that is a conversion tool. That's a conversion tool. Okay. Knowledge is power. The more knowledge you have about the market, about what's going on, that's also a conversion tool. So conversion, help me out here. What else, are, as far as conversion goes, are we, are we, um, when you think conversion, what do you think? This is a congratulation. We're talking here. Everyone's supposed follow to up. What was that, G? Follow up. Like follow up. Follow like up. After. Yes. Perfect. Now, let me ask you a question, everyone. Automation is amazing, but does it take the place of a human being? No. No. You still have to call. You still have to get on that phone, right? You have to still do those things. You have to connect. You've got to connect. You've got to connect, right? Remember our eight Cs. You've got to commit to consistently producing content correctly so you can make a connection and you'll convert more customers and clients in your community. Okay. What else? What else for conversion? Consistency. Consistency. I'm going to say one more thing. As I see in CUI. Video. Video. Video does this. It does this. And if you're consistent, it develops relationships. Video on every single form of, of the sales cycle, video helps you in that. Okay. It, what, what else for conversion? Face-to-face -face meetings. Yep. In person. Reviews. Reviews. Reviews will help you convert. Um, a client appreciation. Like yep. events or events. Mm -hmm. Let's do events. This is like buyer seminar, seller seminar, client appreciation, all those things. Okay. A good website. Yes. Website. Good. Mm -hmm. Personal notes. Yes. Notes. Good. Funnels. Funnels are my website. Rapport building. Rapport, absolutely. Okay, all the things, all the things matter. All right, so we've got marketing, lead generation, lead nurture, <clears throat> uh, conversion. Now it's fulfillment and delivery. Now you've converted that lead. How do you make sure that you give that lead the very best process, the very best fulfillment? You're fulfilling on your promise. How do you do that? Through an awesome workflow. Number one, everybody, systems. Yes, you need systems. You need the workflows, right? If you have the right systems and the right workflows and you're using them, it will alleviate you stress, anxiety, a lot more energy because you're not thinking about all the million things. You're going to give them a much better fulfillment. Now, here's the deal. Initially, when you first have to learn that system, get those together, get, it's hard. It's hard. It's not easy learning a new system. It's not easy using your, your workflows and, and getting it all in there. But once you do, like do the work now so that later you don't have to. Once you get those done, you're not worried. Did I forget that? Am I late? Did I miss this? Right? Oh my gosh. You know, contingencies are due tomorrow. They haven't even had their home inspection yet. Well, your systems tell you that. Hey, it's a 14 day contingency period. You've got seven days left. You still haven't had your inspection. When are you planning on having that? 
right? You put the dates in, you don't have to worry about thinking. It automatically sends out the text messages, the emails, the reminders to you, the other agent, everyone else. Okay, systems will help you. What else? How else do we have a good fulfillment and delivery process? What else What else do we do? I think it's down. Educate right. them. Educate them, exactly. Now, everyone, you need to have S. SOPs. Krista, what's an SOP? What are your standard operating procedures for the way that you do your business? What days are client communication days? What days do you tell them what you're doing for marketing? What days do you tell them exactly what's happening in the, in the transaction? Right? How, you know, what's your standard operating procedure for disclosures? Do you do them before or do you do them after? What's that deadline? When you start to really think about all these areas of your business and you put it down, it, you're going to alleviate all the problems from happening. Okay. What are the SOPs for your business? What's the SOP for you? What's your standard operating procedure for how you're going to run your business? What time is it? Like for me, I know that every day I am up and dressed and ready to go by 8 a.m. I have makeup on, ready to rock and roll, right? Why? Because I know, <laughs> I know if I don't, I'll be 10 o'clock before I finally roll into the office and I've lost the time and then it's lunch. Next thing you know, I've got nothing done. Okay. If you were to work for any other company, if I know that if I get up at eight o'clock, I'm going to give my, my fulfillment and delivery process to my client. I'm going to do a much better job because I have habits and rituals and routines. Right. What is your ritual and routine for how you're operating your business? Are you operating it like a business or is it operating you? If you go to work for Walmart or Costco, you get there at a certain time and your phone is in the drawer. You can't touch it till your 15 minute break. You're not like, oh, hold on a second. Let me just talk to my friend here. Text. <laughs> right. Like you don't do that. OK, so. Fulfillment and delivery. What else? How else do we fulfill? St uh, setting expectations. Oh, good. I love that. Expectations. Communication, right? Talk to them. How do you like to be communicated with? How often? Do you prefer text or do you prefer phone? Here is this marketing plan as far as what you can expect. Here is the, um, you know, the phases of a transaction. Here is the buyer's guide. Here is the seller's guide. Here is the listing presentation video. Here is the seller beware video, right? All of that is fulfillment and delivery. How do we do that? We just start piecing it by piecing, getting it done. I'm listening to the book right now, Cypo Cybergenetics by Dr. Maxwell Malch, which by the way, I'm just obsessed with. And it talks about goal setting and how when you have too many goals and too many projects like that, nothing gets done. And if you just if you just departmentalize and centralize tasks and things, you'll get things done so much more quickly. Right. Um, and I some of you have said you've had a really hard time with that. And so I don't mind doing extra training on like really kind of figuring out how we break down these big audacious goals and activities and tasks and kind of like break them down. We can do that. But Think about like all the things that you want to get done in your business. What time are we have? Okay, good. And how we can then get in the moft. Right? It doesn't make sense to do to work on your buyer guide and your seller guide and your marketing plan and your listing presentation video all at the same time. All those tools are going to help you fulfill better, get a better delivery, get better experience. But if you try to do all of them at one time, you're you're not going to get anything done. It's better to do one. Finish it all the way, move to the next, move to the next, right? Okay, now the last one, refer, retain, resell. The three errors. How do we make sure that people refer us? How do we retain them as, as clients? How do we get them to resell with us? How do we do that? Stay Number in one, contact. How, yep, and I'm going to say it again. I will say it again. Video, video Videos. will help you do that. Number one, okay. What else? Your text messages, video Perfect. text messages. Text messages, video, good. How you doing? Happy birthday, happy anniversary. Just thinking about CRM. it. Yep, yep. Uh, communication. 
that's through your CRM, right? You're drop gonna, buys. Drop buys, good. Market updates, email them to them. Referral, referral reward. Your Happy ads day. that you run. Referral reward, I like that. I like to do coffee dates with past clients. Oh, yes. Coffee. Events. Events. All I've done videos on, on how to take care of your house with professionals, like how to look after your roof or maintenance on your home yep. to send to yeah. past clients. Absolutely. Right? All of these things. Okay, so now what I want you to do is this. I want you to... Take a picture of this so we don't forget, all right? And I want you to think about, and this again, no judgment. This is a great thing. All the things that we just talked about and did, I ought to go back and watch this video. Quite frankly, there's a lot of great ideas up there. And I think about for your business, where you're at, how are you doing with marketing? What can you improve on? How are you doing with lead generation? What can you improve upon? What can you add? What can you enhance? for each and every one of these phases of the, of the complete sales cycle. For you to have a complete business without gaps, we have to think about all of these different phases of the sales cycle, okay? That's how we create, you know, we alleviate gaps in our business. And what I would recommend doing is thinking about the one, like if you're doing okay in some, but think about the one that you probably need the most work in because you don't wanna have big gaps. OK, you don't want to have big gaps in your business. And so think about which one do I have like the biggest gap with and how can I do two or three things to kind of like make I, I want to bridge the gap. I don't want that gap to be so big. How do I bridge the gap and then, you know, work on the next one a little bit in each area. Right. How do I get my marketing better? How do I get my lead generation better? And then just keep going around. Every week, pick one. And then how do I enhance it? The next week, how do I do one thing in this area? The next week, how do I do one thing in this area? But remember, we have to learn, implement, master, and repeat. We have to make sure that whatever we're doing, we continue to do, right? We don't just like do it one time and then forget about it. It's gotta be all of these things need to be made a part of our systems and our processes on how we are running and operating our business as a true, true business. OK, and I don't want you to look at your at this today like, oh, man, I'm, I'm not doing that or I suck at this. No, it look at like, man, I'm so excited that I'm actually thinking about this right now. Good job. I'm thinking about this. It's on my mind. I'm going to make it better. Right. And this is just for business. We can do this with every aspect of our life, quite frankly, and look at, you know, we just always are constantly trying to improve and enhance. And we never stop trying to improve and enhance. That's, that's how we continue to be community market leaders and continue to thrive, not just survive in our market. And I have to say, I love how Cassie just said, like, do not stop, keep going. You know, I just kept going. I didn't stop. I kept adding and enhancing. She's been relentless on it. Can I mention one other thing? A lot of chats yes. talking about goal planning. Don't forget, you have the 12-week year. You can start it anytime you want. She has a whole training we live by it, like start it whenever your 12 week can be whenever, but everybody, a lot of people are asking about goals and like getting to your why. So she's got the abundance map in there. She's got the 12, it's there. Just go do it. And, and it's, it's, you know, that it's a kind of a lot, but it, it'll help you for sure. It, I was So what you were saying, what resonated when I first did it with you, Krista, my list of everything that I wanted to do is this long. And then when we got to the next 12 week year, then my list got smaller. And then when I got to the one where I really felt like I mastered it after we did it for a full year, it was life changing. It was just like, wow, there's nothing on my other list. Like, OK, wait, now what can I add to my other list? It wasn't before I was like, oh, my God, how am I going to get all this done? But there's about, there's something about putting that plan in place, putting an action item, setting a deadline. That's how you're going to get this stuff done in this program is everything set the deadline, follow it just like it is. And like you'll see, like Crystal will say, the top people really did follow the program. They followed it. They succeeded. They didn't stop. The people that got in and out, they did. Oh, I don't want to do that yet. Or I'm just going to I can do this model. Just follow it. Just follow it like it says. Add the stuff as it goes. 
you'll get on these calls and things get overwhelming. Like, oh, I need this. I don't, if you don't know about it, you don't need it yet. You'll know about it in the modules when you get there and you add as you go. I and love you that. If you don't know about it, you don't need it yet. That's good. <laughs> You know, I know that Cassie makes it just sound so easy, but really it is. It is two and a half, over two and a half years of just like pounding the pavement. Everything that you changed, we implemented. Everything that you asked us to do, we did. And I mean, there was times where I was like, this, I'm, you know, lots going out. Like, and it was coming in. I still do a good amount of business. I was the one saying, well, that's not coming from this. And that's not coming from that. And then it just clicks. It does. She says it. It's weird. It happens, but it really does. It clicks. You can't go somewhere without somebody knowing you. You are the authority. It just, it all makes sense. But the people that fail in the program are the ones that do not do things consistently. They don't like I'm telling y'all daily sheet. I told Krista, this is worth $25,000 right here doing this every single day. Every member of my team does it. We all have goals. We all have things that we have to do, but it's all there. It's all in this program. Just follow it. I love the daily sheets too. I, I do. I love them. It gets your head, gets your head right. You know, and, and I'm just going to end with this, everybody. Their happiness is a choice. This, I know it's totally off subject, but I'm, I'm inspired from my reading this morning. And plus I live my life like this, but happiness is a choice, right? Every aspect of our life is a choice. Like we, we stuff happens to us all. We choose how we are going to let the external environment make or break our day, right? Like take back control. There's so much research on happiness and you know, when you smile and when you're happy, your your you have your blood your uh, your blood pressure goes down, energy goes up, you live longer. I mean, there's so many different aspects of it, and and happiness is a choice. And it's impossible to think that every single day everything's going to be peachy and king. But you can choose to take all these little external things that happen to you and not become a victim and let it always just take over and consume your life. Or you can shoot, and when you're having a bad day or, or a rough day, just start start smiling. Who was it that told me? Was it you, Cassie, that this thing? Is that you? Okay, somebody told me this. this is funny. No, I'm the markets between your ears, girl. Like you're the markets, what you make of it. Your life's what you make of it. It's all in your head. Yes, yes. I think that was Tara Roy. Well, who was it? Oh, Tara Roy. Tara Roy. I was going to say that like, okay, Tara, are you here? But like the, she was doing reading this thing and it was talking to me. If you're having a bad day, put the pen in your mouth like this. I just hold it there, you know, for a couple of minutes. And all of a sudden, like, it makes you smile. Uh, and then <laughs> throw up, my God. Yeah. And then um, I got a weird, weird mouth things. But so, but then it like, it makes you, these endorphins in your head and stuff like that, right? So like this morning, I was just, I was on when I'm, I have a friend coming in from Idaho. We're going to be doing some videos and stuff this week. And I didn't sleep at all last night. Like, I mean, you're talking at all. And so I was at the gym and I'm like, oh, I have energy. I'm like yelling, running, running around the gym. And I'm yelling, I have energy. I'm going to get so much done today. And people are like, who is that psycho lady? And I'm like, hi, <laughs> just, and, you know, and it's like, it just got my mood up and it got me energy. And sometimes you just have to do those things. So I just want to leave this, you with this. First of all, remember this, the sales cycle. We got to think about every single aspect of it. And you have a choice as far as how your day is going to go. You have a choice. So make it a good one. Just like smile. And when you're feeling a little rough, just smile more. And I promise you things will get better. Okay. Because you get what you think. Energy goes or focus flows. Thoughts become things. Actions become your life. Uh, I'd like to just say one thing. Sure what you were saying um i i learned in another program once upon a time ago that you speak what you want into the world so it's word to world not the world to your word so you're telling the world how you want your life to be not the world telling you how you have to be i Does love that, that. word to world yes so word good. to world, not world to word. I just encourage all of you to start listening to these kind of books that just talk about all this. Like there's so much science around all of it, everyone. So much science around your thoughts and what you think about. It's just in incredible. I mean, it's incredible. And I'll tell you, I've been studying this so much lately because I'm, you know, speaking at that event and I'm, you know, 
I'm great at speaking live, but it's something that is going to be difficult for me. So I, I don't even like to say that out loud. So I've really been studying like our conscious behavior and our thoughts just around that one thing, because I want to go there and just make a massive impact. And I, 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 I won't be able to do it unless I really work on my own thoughts around it. Right. So I'm keep reminding myself about the science behind it. So I've just been obsessed with it lately. All right, everyone make it an amazing day. Don't forget uh, team. If you can make sure that you put the, um, the link for Thursday's call in the major blueprint so everyone can have it. We're going to be having a guest speaker, Casey Jiha, speaking with the four levels of leadership this Thursday. Everyone is invited. We'd love to have you all. It's going to be amazing. Um, we want to develop ourselves as leaders. The more that we are leaders within our community, within our families, the more that our lives will be enhanced because leadership equals growth. So uh, have a great day and I will see you all hopefully on Thursday and make it an amazing day. Great job today, everybody. Hey there, I have a brand new podcast called Fired Up with Krista Mayshore, where I bring my high energy right to your ears. This podcast is available on all your favorite podcast platforms. So do me a favor, go subscribe and leave a review. All this information is free and I cannot wait to teach you everything I know. Thanks so much for watching my video. You can learn more about how to be a successful real estate professional by watching other videos that I have. And be sure to subscribe to my channel. And as always, make it a great home selling and buying day.